Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto in the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I lost 200 pounds without bariatric surgery and how you can be successful on your own weight loss journey. So if that's what you're looking for, don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. Tips. Alrighty everyone, welcome back to another video. I am so excited that you stopped by to check in on me on my week two of my reverse diet. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you everything that I do to adjust the way I'm eating, my calories, my macros, and things like that, exercise and daily life, and all of the things that come into play when it comes to maintaining weight loss. I'm gonna be showing you guys what I do in order to maintain the weight loss that I achieved this last summer on my 12 week summer keto weight loss cut. I'm excited about it and I'm motivated to share it with you so that you might have some idea on what you can do once you achieve your goal weight or you're just ready to take a break from dieting for a while because we should never be living in the dieting space forever and ever and ever. The dieting space should be a short term concise thing that we do in order to kind of keep things in balance and get ourselves back to a restart area, but it is not the way that we should be living our lives every single day. And a reverse diet is a way for you to come out of the dieting phase as you moving toward the maintenance phase in order to first of all, figure out what your maintenance is. Secondly, in order to stop hunger from taking over and overeating when your metabolism hasn't quite caught up. And thirdly, to just give you a little bit more control about how you come out of that diet phase and maybe, just maybe, you might lose a little weight on the journey to maintenance. So, I am now on week two. In week one's video, I attempted to describe what a reverse diet was, and I feel like it was not very clear. Um, it's hard for me to explain about reverse dieting because I'm fairly new at it. This will be my second attempt to do a reverse diet. The first attempt was really successful. I did it in the fall of 2020, all the way to the summer of 2021. Um, basically push my calories up from 1300, which was my dieting calories when I was on my last cut a couple years ago, all the way up to 2150 calories, which is where I was maintaining before I went in and had my plastic surgery. When I had my plastic surgery done, things went a little bit haywire, as we will discuss later in this video. So if you are here for updates on me, that's gonna be later in the video. We're gonna talk about uh, seeing the lymphedema doctor for the first time um, and what happened there and what I am dealing with going forward that way. But that doesn't necessarily come into play in the actual reverse diet. So since this is a reverse diet video, I'm just gonna get, give you basic the basic laydown of what a reverse diet is before I start. Then we'll go into the footage and then I'll come back and talk about all the other things like how it affected me on the scale, my data and everything like that how I'm keeping track of everything, how I'm feeling, and of course, how things went in various doctory type things <laughs> this week. So, <laughs> that seems to be all I talk about recently is going to the doctor. But you know, when you are a mom and you've been a mom for 26 years and you've basically done everything for your children and nothing for yourself forever and ever, amen, and then you decide you're gonna go fix all of your things or at least, at least see if you have all the things you thought you had, that's what happens. You end up seeing a lot of specialists in a very short amount of time, and that's where I'm at. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk about a reverse diet and give you the basic rundown of what that is. So a reverse diet is a way of adding calories slowly into your diet in order to push your calories up. Be that going from a cutting calorie macro situation like I've been doing, like you know, if you're starting at like 1300 to 1500 calories because you've been dieting for a while and you just wanna get back to maintenance, or if you're already higher on the calories and you want to see how high you can push your maintenance up to be. One of the main reasons you would want to reverse diet after you have been dieting at all is so that you can give your metabolism a chance to catch up with your calories before you end up eating in a surplus too quickly. 
Yo-yo dieting is probably the main problem most people have with keeping weight off and the reason why it doesn't work is because people will go on a diet and they'll be super motivated, they'll lose a lot of weight over a short amount of time or maybe it's a long amount of time, I don't know, Like, but then they decide they are done dieting, they, meet, they met their goal weight or whatever they did and they decide they can just go back to eating the way they were. Well, the way they were may have been a surplus to begin with because they were gaining weight probably, which is why they went on a diet. Also, when they went on that diet, their metabolism kind of dieted down and the, it was a body's protection mechanism to help deal with the smaller amount of calories. Your body starts to process things a little bit more efficiently in order to burn less calories. So the amount of calories that you burn just sitting still or doing nothing has actually decreased over the time that you've been on your diet. And if you just go right back to eating, even if you're super careful and you go right back to eating what your previous maintenance was or what the computer says that your TDEE perfect maintenance calorie should be for your size, the problem is, is that you didn't give your metabolism time to catch up. So then people will be in technically a surplus of calories and they will start to put on some weight. Also, when you go back to eating more food, you have more food in your system, so your weight goes up. If you go back to eating carbohydrates, you're gonna get glycogen in your muscles again, and you're gonna get water in your muscles again, and so your weight goes up. There are many factors into why your weight goes up. Also, when you start eating more calories, the ghrelin hormone kicks in and tells you to eat everything in sight, and sometimes you do. So you may not even just be eating maintenance calories. You may be overeating for maintenance. You may be binge eating even, and then, a person will put on weight really, really fast and then they panic, right? And what do you do when you panic? Oh no, my weight's going up. Oh no, oh no, I'm freaking out. Uh, what do I do? I, do I, I got a diet, right? So then they go right back to the diet phase. And the problem with that is that they didn't give their metabolism time to repair itself and to get back up into a good place before they went into a diet again. So guess what? The diet isn't gonna work as well it isn't gonna be as sufficient. They're gonna get tired and worn out from it faster and the cycle will continue. They'll give up, they'll decide to go back to maintenance calories, they'll overeat, they'll gain weight super quickly, they'll panic and they'll go back on a diet. And this is where we get that cyclical dieting and we get people that we have been eating 1200 calories for years and they say, I can't eat one calorie over 1200 or I will gain weight. That may or may not be a fact, but it might actually be true because the longer you spend in that lower calorie zone, the less your body is gonna burn standing still and the harder it is to lose weight. So the ideal thing to do is to keep your metabolism really, really healthy while you're in your diet phase, take regular diet breaks. And if you wanna know more information about that, I do have a whole video on how to use diet breaks while dieting. Um, I'll try to remember to link it at the end of the video in the end card, but it's easy to find if you search Keto Chaos, Keto Chaos Diet Break. So it's pretty easy to find that one. Um, and I go into all of that, but if you keep your metabolism kind of healthier while you're dieting, and then when you're done, when you feel like you're ready to eat more food, instead of just jumping back to maintenance calories, you move your calories up slowly so that your metabolism has time to recover. You don't get a huge surplus of calories that causes you to put on a lot of weight really, really quickly and make you panic. And then you can slowly over time push your calories up to where you're comfortable and then just stay there for a really long time. Ideally, you want to reverse diet longer than you dieted for. So if you've been dieting for 10 years, you're gonna want to reverse diet and or eat in maintenance for 10 years to recover. Ideally, you want to be in a reverse diet for double the time or triple the time that you were dieting. This is why my way of doing it kind of works really awesome for me. I like to reverse diet, eat more food all through the Christmas time season and um, all through my busy dance mom life because it is kicked in and kicked in hard. As you will see in this video, it is rough around here. <laughs> Ah! And then in the summer, when I have, we don't go on very many vacations. We don't really do much in the summer except swim in our backyard pool and just chill. Sometimes we go to the local amusement park. Every once in a while we go on a vacation. This year we went to Disneyland in May. We stay home in the summer because our lives are so crazy. I just crash and burn. But in the summer, I can cut. So if I get to the end of the year and I've put on, you know, 10, 15, 20 pounds and I'm just like, ooh, that's a little uncomfy. Then I can go on a cut for the summer and remove some of that weight and then start the cycle again. 
Ideally, I would reverse diet this year, get to a maintenance calories, and then stay in a maintenance calorie zone for as long as I want to, years in fact, um, and then slowly you will gain weight. I mean, because nobody ever stays the same weight forever. Nobody. It's just not possible. You're either in a diet phase or a bulking phase, regain phase, or a reverse diet where you're being really careful, pushing your calories up. In a maintenance phase, you're always gaining weight because there's just times when you overeat. There's just times in life when we overeat. That's just facts. And you're going to slowly eke up over time. But ideally, you could stay in maintenance calorie zone or reverse dieting or whatever phase that is, the comfortable phase, for a very, very, very long time. Interspersed with very short, you know, six to 18 weeks of dieting every few years. That is the ideal. Now me, I was getting to that place when I had my plastic surgery. I was not expecting my weight to skyrocket. I was not expecting to be dealing with what I am dealing with. I will discuss at the end of the video. Um, all of these things that had to happen after my surgery. My surgery went really, really well. I look really good. But I do have some problems that stemming from that that pushed my weight up, like majorly. And I was beating myself up, saying, oh my gosh, girl, you are overeating, you are a mess. Well, I wasn't. But the fact is, my weight is up. And so this summer, I decided I was going to try and cut. I was not able to cut as much as I wanted to, but I'm really happy with the success I had this summer. And of course, I'm dealing with other things that don't necessarily have anything to do with diet, and there's only so much a person can do. So to recap, the main reasons that you would want to use a reverse diet is so that you can minimize fat gain following a diet phase. And that is why I am doing it, and that is why I'm sharing it with you. And that is why I go through these cycles of life and I label them so they're super easy to find, but this is just how I live my life. It's nothing exciting other than I'm showing you how I do it so you can try it too. All right, so as we move into the footage, you're gonna be seeing everything I ate this week except for excepting for a few built bars that I missed. I have to admit to you up front, the food in this video is pretty sad and sorryful. And it probably is going to be sad and sorryful for a while. <laughs> um, I'm still figuring out my new schedule and it is wild. I'm on a roller coaster ride and having a hard time keeping up. Let's be honest. So you're gonna see a lot of Bilt Bars in this video. I ate so many Bilt Bars this week. I think I may have actually almost eaten an entire box. Not a full box, I don't think. Actually, I don't know, because I've got several boxes. <laughs> it's hard to tell. But let me put it that way. I ate a lot of food this week that normally I probably on a cutting phase wouldn't eat so much of, but it was just a necessity. You're also gonna be seeing my 360 body view before and after for this week. I'm doing that in the reverse diet so that you guys and, and I can see if I'm gaining any weights, right? Like there's ways that you can keep track of your gaining weight. Measuring your inches, looking at pictures, and the scale. And the scale is the least reliable. The scale is the number one thing I use to determine if the reverse diet is working. And so I do go by the scale number for those things. But I also want to keep a close eye on my measurements and my actual pictures. And since I have been doing the 360 and it's just habit, I'm going to keep doing that as long as I can do that. Though the sun is going... Um, coming up later and later every single week. And so it's getting harder and harder because I have to be to the church at 9 a.m. So if for some reason I can't do it anymore, I will let you know. But for now, that is my plan. Keep showing you that. I also show you my weight on the scale every single day and any exercise that I did this week, which generally at this time of year is going to involve dance classes. So all that to say, let's get to the food.
Alrighty guys, it is Sunday and this is the beginning of week two of my reverse diet. Um, this week my plan is to just up my calories on the weekend days and keep my calories pretty low on the weekdays. It was fairly easy for me to do that last week so that is my plan. So today I am starting with a little bit of higher calorie foods than normal. I made myself a smoothie. Again, I made one last week as well um, if you saw that but I made it with um, let's see, I think it was 200 grams of yogurt and 180 grams of frozen strawberries, one scoop of the Health Code protein powder. I usually don't use that unless I'm doing high calories because one scoop is literally 200 calories just for one scoop. So it's kind of crazy, but it's so yummy. I love it. And it's very good a meal replacement. It has really good healthy fats. Um, I also put in a couple of squirts of Mio, a little bit of protein milk and some almond milk. And I think that's everything. And then I'm also going to be having two eggs, of course, because I have so many of them. And a perfect keto um, chocolate peanut butter. Ah, these are vegan. Vegan keto bars. And I'm going to be having that for my first meal of the day. Alrighty, guys. It's 8 o'clock on Sunday. And I'm about to have my final meal of the day. I'm having two large chicken thighs, it's about 300 grams of chicken thighs, 200 grams of green beans with eight grams, no, six grams of butter on top, and this Frank's Res Hots on the top of that, and a built granola bar, and that is gonna be my last meal of the day. Alrighty guys, I am totally late for my lymphatic appointment. I meant to be early, and my kids called me and distracted me. I'm heading out there now, and I am didn't have time to eat either, so I grabbed a couple built bars because that's what I have. Um, I don't know if I'm going to eat them unless I get really hungry or not, but I might just eat them just because anxiety, you know? So, yeah, on my way to the appointment. time to cry I've got stuff to do I don't have time for any of this stuff <sighs> so I guess I'm not sure what I was hoping for with this visit I've been waiting for this visit I've been trying to see these guys since like May they said I had to get a referral so I finally got the referral and now you know months have gone by and I have researched everything about this condition already and probably know I will I guarantee you 100% I know more about it than they do <laughs> which sucks because that means there's not much they could do for me which I don't know what I was hoping for well I do know what I was hoping for I was hoping that they would schedule me for every other week lymphatic drainage massages but apparently they don't do that here. And the only option I have for lymphatic drainage massages is to pay someone to do it. Which if I could afford to do, would have already done it. Or if I knew of anyone, I didn't even ask her. She, she was gonna give me somebody and I just was kind of like, I can't afford that. So then I didn't get the name and I'll probably regret that later because maybe I will be able to afford it later. But then I guess I'll just call. Oh my gosh, I have to stop crying. I don't have time to cry. This is not the end of the world. So, the positive thing was, she came in, looked at my legs, and she goes, oh yeah, you definitely have it. And she, while she did see that I had lipedema in my fronts of my legs and my thighs like I thought I had, which was good, because that's kind of what I was thinking, and that's what I've accepted, you know, that there's really nothing I can do Aside for as much diet and exercise, we'll get rid of as much as I have that I can get rid of. The only way to get rid of it is to go to California and have it very expensively liposuctioned out by some of those lipidemia specialists over there. And it's funny because, like, she's like, it's doctor, and I'm like, I already know the answer. Like, she couldn't think of the guy's name, and I'm like, Amron, and she's like, yeah, and I'm like, I already know all of this stuff. I know all of this stuff. Like, I know everything you're telling me. She gives me a YouTube video on how to do self-lymphatic drainage massage. I already have watched this video. I already do it. I already have sent it to other people. 
same one. So she did measure me. Okay, so I'm getting off track, like I always do. She wrote dots on me. I should have, dang, I should have taken a video of that. She put Sharpie lines on me, and then she measured around each Sharpie line, and she wrote down the measurement, and then she did lymphatic drainage massage on me for like less than five minutes on each side, and I decreased in size a lot. That's what I was hoping for. What I was hoping for is to get lymphatic drainage massage and then fitted for compression with the smaller size. I was hoping they would do the double wrapping on my legs, which she didn't even suggest. And I was hoping they would give me a compression pump. But I guess I'm just not bad enough for them to do those treatments. But I don't want to get bad. That's like the point, right? I wanted to be, I wanted to maintain where it's at. And at first I just, I guess I didn't realize what she was saying. But what she was saying was, I do have the lipedema, but that is not my biggest issue. I have lymphedema, chronic lymphedema, permanent, permanent lymphedema from the scarring from my plastic surgery and also she said that the scars are completely movable and flexible and fine and tiny and as good as they could possibly be so if I'm still swelling and I'm still having this issue at this point it's not going to get any better it is what it is it's permanent and it is from the surgery which I've been telling everybody it wasn't from the surgery and everybody keeps telling me you know, like everybody keeps asking me, if you knew, would you would you go back? Would you still do the surgery? Okay, well, yeah. I mean, I need my muscles repaired so that I can like use them. And I wanted my stomach, yucky saggy stomach gone. So yeah, I still do it. But the one I regret and the one she says I probably shouldn't have done was the thigh lift. She thinks if I hadn't done a thigh lift, I probably wouldn't be having any issues. And I paid an extra $7,000 to have the thigh lift done, which probably blocked off, it, it just blocked off in all ways, the access to my lymph nodes. So she says my lymph nodes aren't damaged. She's like, no, your lymph nodes are okay. They're fine. It's just, they're, they're obviously working because I don't have, like I do have some limb difference, but not like crazy amount and so my lymph nodes are working, but they just can't get rid of all the fluid because all the pathways to them are blocked by scar tissue all the way around my body, all the way up the center of my body, and the tops of my legs. So I guess if I could go back and not do the thigh lift, which I wasn't really sure I wanted to do to begin with, I guess knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't have done the circumferential, maybe. Maybe I would have just done a tummy tuck. Um, I don't know where I am, I'm lost. I need a GPS, and I think I went the wrong way. Oh, good grief. So I ask her, I'm like, so what you're saying is, I basically cut off all the pathways to my lymph nodes in my groin. If I choose to go in and have um, my arms done, where they cut through my armpits, then I would basically be causing myself to have lymphedema over my whole body. And none of my lymph nodes would be working and I would get exorbitantly huger. <laughs> and she basically was like, I wouldn't do it if I were you. So I'm stuck with my arms which I already kind of accepted, but it sucks to hear it. And this condition, as much as I keep working on it, I am just trying to work on it for maintenance. Nothing that I'm doing is ever going to actually fix this problem, 
though I could have lipedema removed with, li with liposuction and then run the risk of swelling super bad because my lymph nodes don't have access and so I don't know if I would end up with worse lymphedema if I had the lipedema removed from my legs. And the only way to really know that for sure is to have an actual consult with Dr. Amron or Dr. Schmidt or even Dr. Herbst and see what she thinks. But the problem is these doctors are not near me. They are far away and I would have to pay to go and see them. I mean, maybe my insurance would cover it, but I don't know. It might be out of network, but I literally, I just, I can't do that. I, I, I can't do that. So I'm like, she's like, get in the pool. She, she told me to wear Spanx. I have worn Spanx. I have been wearing compression for a very long time. I wish I hadn't stopped wearing compression because if I'd known that that was the only treatment that I was ever gonna be able to do and I was gonna have to do it for the rest of my life, well, I dang well I should've just been doing it from the beginning after my surgery and just kept doing it rather than listening to everybody on the Facebook group saying that your body will get used to the compression so you should take it off or the doctor saying you don't really need it anymore. She told me that I should switch to Spanx and I'm laughing because I'm like, Old Navy Power Press leg leggings are much more compression than Spanx are. And part of the reason, the irony is, part of the reason I had the surgery to begin with is so I didn't have to spend my entire life in Spanx. Ah, oh, the irony. So, yeah, anyway, I gotta drive. I will see if I can update you guys later when I'm a little bit less emotional and accepting. You know, this is this was my reaction when I first found out about it, and so I'm sure I will get to a place where it's not the worst thing. I could look way worse. It could be so much worse. She told me she I, I look amazing, and I'm like, I know. I want to keep it that way. I was hoping to get a compression pump and to squeeze my legs even more with like double wrap bandages. I'm just gonna learn to do it myself, I guess. I was really, really hoping they would do that. Basically, she said, you don't need to come back and see me, even though my insurance would cover coming and getting a lymphatic drainage massage from her every week for the next 20 weeks. I can't do it because I'm not bad enough for their clinic to just give massage. I have to go pay a massage therapist out of pocket for the massages that I need in order to keep my chronic condition at bay. How is that a thing? Granted, if I was way worse, Guaranteed they'd do it for me there, but I'm not bad enough. The irony. All right, well, I'll talk to you guys later when I wrap my brain around it a little bit more. All right, you guys, it is almost four o'clock. Just haven't had a break today. It's been rough. And I am heading out to pick my daughter up from art club and then go straight to dance class. So I'm having some of my famous lemon blueberry sludge in the car on the way and hopefully it won't spill because I need food. And that's gonna be my second dish meal of the day-ish. We're at the dance studio and we're really bored. <laughs> really bored. <laughs> you know I got that. Yeah, I know. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm bored. I have my mama's Do do. 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 Do
guys, it's 10 o'clock. I got home from jazz class and I have to admit that dancing just kind of cheered me up a bit. I just kept thinking about counting my blessings that I'm able to do that and I felt confident and I didn't feel like it was too hard for me today and that was a relief um, after getting the whole thing diagnosed at the lymphedema clinic. Um, it was kind of overwhelming. I was kind of sad and emotional and then the dance class really cheered me up. So now it's 10 o'clock and I'm having my final meal of the day. I am having Hawaiian haystack. So this is 200 grams of cauliflower rice topped by eight no seven ounces of shredded chicken with a gravy made from bouillon and xanthan gum. On top of that, I've got 40 grams of cheddar cheese, 60 grams of tomatoes, um, some green onion, and 12 grams of slivered almonds. That is going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it is 1.30 on Tuesday and I'm having my first meal of the day. Today I am having two eggs and two pieces of Colby Monterey Jack cheese and then I made a smoothie with basically yogurt, health life protein powder, fair life milk, strawberries, blueberries, and mio. Um, this will put me over my carbs but to me it's worth it and that is going to be my first meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it is 9 o'clock at night. I am home from the dance studio. Um, while I was at the dance studio, I lost my phone and I didn't film that I had a built bar there and also a friend shared half of a Quest peanut butter cups with me. Um, so I tracked that, but I didn't video it. And tonight I am having pizza truffles. So I made these pizza truffles using two eggs, um, one tablespoon of tomato paste, some garlic powder, salt and pepper. Um, I just mixed that all up and then I put 10 grams of mozzarella cheese on each side, so 60 grams of mozzarella cheese total, and five pepperonis on each one, and cook those up in the waffle maker. And I haven't done this in a really long time. I kept thinking about having ranch with it, but then I decided I'd rather have a protein bar again. So yes, I know my carbs are way high, but I'm having a built bar, and that is going to be my last meal of the day. Right. Okay. Alrighty, everyone. It is 1140. I am having um, a quick bowl of my lemon sludge before I leave. Today is our busiest day of the week, and I honestly don't think that I'm going to have time to eat at all today. So I have no idea what I'm eating. But right now, I'm having quickly some yogurt before I leave so that I won't starve. Same macros as usual with blueberries on top and sugar-free whipped cream. And that is going to be my first meal of the day. Alrighty, guys. I'm out running errands. I haven't been home in a while. It is 2 o'clock. And I am having a Bill Bar. Of course I am. That's what I do. Probably going to be doing a lot of that in the future, just so you guys know. Because my life just went from... I have lots of time to make things for myself and have time for myself, too. Ah! Yeah. Alrighty guys, it's 10.30. It's taken me a whole hour to decide what to even eat. Just didn't really want to eat tonight. It was a long day. I didn't get to have my clogging class because we had a meeting at our studio. It wasn't super awesome. And now I'm eating, finally. Finally settled on, this is, um, oh no, I forgot what it is. Bird's eye. Bird's eye a Spanish cauliflower rice blend topped with um, one can, one big can of canned chicken that I kind of just cooked up in a pan with some seasonings. And then on top I've got 50 grams of mozzarella and 80 grams of tomatoes. That's going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it is 2 o'clock on Thursday. I'm about to have my first meal of the day. I am having two eggs, some mozzarella cheese, 30 grams, fried in a pan, 50 grams of fresh tomatoes that my friends gave me and my regular sludge with blueberries and a built bar. That's gonna be my first meal of the day. It is dark in here. I'm in the living room, we have one light. And this is gonna be my last meal of the day. New York strip, 10 ounces, 155 grams of broccoli with six grams of butter and some tomatoes. Alrighty guys, it's two o'clock on Friday and I'm about to have my first meal of the day. I am having two eggs, 30 grams of mozzarella, mozzarella cheese fried in a pan, 70 grams of tomatoes, a built bar, and my regular sludge. And that is going to be my first meal of the day.
Alrighty guys, it is 10 o'clock I think. Yep, 10.03. I just got back from Nutcracker practice and I had a built bar. Oh, I showed that. I recorded. Look at me, being awesome. Had a lot of snacks today, so didn't really have a lot of macros and I'm going over tonight, but it is what it is. I am having Quest Chip nachos with 30 grams. So this is one package of Quest Chips with 30 grams of cheddar cheese. 150 cooked, so 150 grams of cooked turkey that was left over from the kids dinner last night and 80 grams of tomatoes and that is it and that is gonna be my last meal of the day alrighty everyone it's 4 30 on Saturday I just got home from the wedding shower and getting my nutcracker costume kind of worked on and <laughs> haven't eaten anything except I ate two Bill Bars. I only showed one of them, but I ended up eating two and those vegetables and things that I had had the wedding shower. So I'm just grabbing myself a quick bowl of sludge. Today I made it with snickerdoodle keto chow and a little perfect keto cinnamon cereal on top. Um, other than that, same macros as usual. And that's gonna be the end of my first meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it's 10 o'clock, I'm finally home. Woo, what a day. Um, I am having the same thing I had yesterday. This the uh, nachos, basically, Quest chips with today only 150 grams of the turkey crumbles because it's all I had left. And 80 grams of tomatoes, 30 grams of sour cream, and 40 grams of cheddar cheese. And that's going to be my last meal of the day. Okay, okay, okay. We have a lot to unpack, don't we? Are you a little overwhelmed? I know I'm a little overwhelmed. So many ups and downs this week <laughs> from the complete inability to eat anything of substance that wasn't snack food, I swear, um, to the scale being somewhat cooperative, which was awesome, to my abysmal lymphedema doctor visit. I don't know how much of that 10 minute crying diatribe that I went on in the car I put in this video, but suffice it to say, that was my legit, healthy, normal, not super happy reaction to the news that I have permanent lymphedema from my plastic surgery, which is something that I have vehemently denied for a very long time and have had a very hard time accepting. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute after we talk about the data, but suffice it to say, it was a crazy week. No doubt. So, first of all, let's go over the data with regards to the actual reverse diet, since a lot of people might be here just for the reverse information, and then they don't really care about me and the doctor, so we'll get to that second. So, my weights for the week, though, were, ah, guys, not one single 190. Can you even believe that? I literally thought I was permanently implanted in the 190s for the rest of my human life. So to see it in the 180s for a full week was a blessed relief, I am, I must say. So my weights for this week, 188.6, 188.6, 189, 188.4, 188.2, and 188.6. And then of course I threw in this morning's weight of 187 just because I went down again. But my official average weight for the week, which is what I go by all the time, but especially for the reverse diet, was 188.6, which was down 3.3 pounds. What? Now, I really earned that 3.3 last week. Let's be real. We know that last week I had a very difficult time eating anything 
it was even crazier than this week because my brain wasn't working like it couldn't cope. This week my brain was coping a little better, but my food choices weren't the best. So I was thrilled that the scale did not freak out because everybody has told me a million times, and I mean a million billion times, that built bars make me swell up, built bars make me gain weight, and here I am just stuffing them like they're candy all week long. And it didn't do anything to my weight or my swelling or anything. I, that's been all pretty much normal all week. So go figure, go figure. I'm happy about that because built bars are life. And I'm so grateful to be able to eat them again. And I just bought myself a few more boxes because I haven't bought any in so long, so long that the ones I'm eating are hard as a rock and I'm still eating them anyway because I need them in my life. <laughs> Anyway, so let's go over my calories for the week. You kind of saw that, but I kind of want to go over the average calories and everything and talk about that really quickly. So 1920, 1601, 1561, 1647, 1729, 1729, and 1740 for an average of 1703. My original plan was to have had two days of higher calories and a bunch of days at smaller calories. But as the week progressed and I realizing, realized that ghrelin was kicking in, my hunger hormones, and I was feeling hungry, I decided instead that I was gonna try and just kind of keep it even. And then the last three days, I still went up even more calories. I think it was an extra built bar a day, something like that, that pushed those calories up crazy but because most of those extra calories came from built bars that meant my protein numbers were really really stellar my average protein for the week was 170 and that is exactly 40 percent of my calories which is where i like to have it it's hard to do as you push your calories up to keep that protein at 14 at 40 percent it's almost impossible actually and it's part of the reason why i ended up eking carbs up last time which i don't know if i'm going to do again but it's hard it's hard to do that it's easy to get calories from fat not so easy to get calories from protein when you're having a higher calorie level. So my carbs were up as well because of all the built Bars and I'm pretty sure I kicked myself out of ketosis, but I survived um, and my carbs were 39 average for the week. Pretty much that was almost every single day's carbs. And then my fats were at 82, which is right in my range. I like to keep my range between, you know, 50 and 90-ish while I'm dieting and now I'm pushing them up, but I'm trying to keep that protein balanced. It's, it's, it's hard to do. But my average calories for the week were 1703, which was 89 up from last week, so I successfully raised my calories by 89. I lost weight, so that means I'm supposed to raise my calories again. Anywhere from between 40 and 70 is my goal, but if I feel like I wanna do a whole 100, I can do that. I know my metabolism is actually in good health because I was super careful with my diet breaks this summer, and I have only been on a calorie deficit for, you know, 12, well, this will be 14 weeks. I'm technically still in a deficit. So 14 weeks so far. I don't think that I damaged my metabolism. I really, really could push up quicker. But the thing is about pushing up quicker, you get to maintenance faster and then you don't really lose any more weight, which ideally, I'd love to lose some more weight. Who wouldn't, right? So I'm super happy that I went down 3.3 pounds. Um, but Measurements wise, I didn't have any change at all, which was kind of surprising because when I woke up this morning, my stomach looked so tiny. I really thought that I was gonna be going down in my stomach me measurement, but I noticed that it was because of my swelling, I've been doing, so at that doctor that I'll talk about in a minute, I've been doing um, more manual lymph drainage massage instead of as much dry brushing. And I think I manually lymph drainaged my front and then it all collected in my back. So, I, I could feel it in my back and in fact my hips went up a half an inch so I got to make sure that I remember to manually drain the back as well because I do have that circular tummy tuck and I do collect swelling right at the top of that of that scar tissue right where um right where I have from the very beginning and the fact the places that swell still are the places that were most swollen and tender and uncomfortable right after surgery and it's still the same thing that I'm dealing with. So all in all, it was a successful week two of my reverse diet. My plan is to move my calories up because the scale went down. This is my cycle week and it's hit or miss whether or not I will swell up like a balloon and gain some weight or whether or not I will hold steady. Um, either thing could happen and so I will just see what happens next week. I know that sometimes the scale will go up when it really wasn't the calories and it was my weird weight 
gain from water and whatever, whatever. That's okay. I just still go by the scale. It just makes it easier if the scale, so if the scale stays the same, then I still push up a little bit, but just not as much. And if the scale goes up, then I like to stay where I'm at and not raise calories. Um, we'll see if that's how it goes. That's how I did it last time, but I'm, I'm kind of thinking I might go a little quicker this time. I'm just gonna play it by ear. If I'm feeling extra hungry, I'm not gonna torture myself. I'm not gonna eat everything because I know how dangerous ghrelin can be and it can take over and the cookie monster eating all the Bill Bar monster. I mean, I could eat a whole bar box of Bill Bars and you just went, ah, that's a lot of calories, right? So <laughs> we won't let that happen. But I'm gonna listen, if my body is hungry, I'm not gonna just be like, sorry, no, you gained weight last week, bad you. I'm just gonna do and play it by ear. If I start to pack on the pounds though, we will chill for a while where we're at. That's the plan for the reverse diet. That's the whole update for that. Now let's talk lymphedema, lipedema, okay? So those of you who didn't care about that, you can go. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up. And those of you who really, really care about me and want to hear all the juicy, de juicy details, well, let's go over it a little bit now that I've molded over in my head a little bit. So I don't know how clear I was in the section when I was discussing about the doctor. I finally was able to get into the lymphedema clinic I have been trying to get into for months. When I've called them before, they said they needed a referral. It took me forever to figure out which primary care physician I dared to go to. And you guys probably remember, if you're watching this segment, you probably watched the other ones, about how when I went to the primary care physician, she basically didn't really do anything. She just gave me the referrals I wanted. If I'd have known that it was gonna be like that, I would have not tried so hard to find the perfect doctor and I would have just gone to see somebody and told them what I needed. But maybe it wouldn't have worked out the same way. Already I have been to see a behavioral therapist who diagnosed me with ADHD, which who was surprised, not me. And I was able to start taking 20 milligrams of extended release Ritalin, which is working okay. Um, I do have some wear off time in the evening. That's really frustrating. And I'm gonna discuss like maybe adjusting some things, but for the most part, it's really, really helping. The second thing I went to was last week when I went to the, um, speech language pathologist who helped me with some exercises and techniques to help me with my vocal cords. That is going really well. As you can see, I am mostly talking this whole video in my forward voice without having to think about it and without having to stress over it and without getting lazy and going into my chest voice, which is here. And I have been in my chest voice a little bit in this video, but I've been pushing myself back forward and you can hear the difference. My voice is much more clear. It's a little bit more childlike sounding, a little less like what I'm used to, but it's working. And my singing voice has improved. I was able to lead the choir this morning beautifully and not struggle with pain. Um, I've been doing a lot of massage, laryngeal massage, but basically you do, you do here, and then circles to the out, outer muscles and then circles down to the bottom. And then you take your larynx at your voice box and you wiggle it. Uh, <laughs> you can hear it making back and forth. You wiggle it a little bit and then you press it down to stretch. And I also yawn deep into my throat to open my muscles. And it's helping so much. I've been reading Harry Potter all week. I've talked to friends. I led the choir, all my things. And my voice is improving. I'm so happy, like overjoyed about that. So then I go to see the lymphedema therapist and I'm thinking, yay, finally. So when I was walking in those door doors, I had an idea of what was gonna happen. What I had an idea of is that they were gonna say I had lipedema and that I don't have lymphedema anymore and it's all healed up or that it will heal up. And that they would offer me some intensive therapies like double wrapping my legs with the ACE bandages like I've seen some other girls doing and or possibly ordering me a flexi touch um, pump, which I really like to own because you just put it on your legs and it literally squeezes your legs for like an hour and it really helps push everything up and you can get them on your abdomen too. So I could be doing my entire lower body for an hour every evening while I just watch some TV. I really want that, but so it's from a medical company and I don't know if you can buy them on your own, but I do know they cost $8,000. So there's no way I'm buying one of those anyway. And I was really, really hoping since I met my deductible this year that the insurance would cover it. But much to my chagrin, it did not go the way I was hoping. She did look at my legs and go, oh yeah, it does look like you really have lipedema. But then upon closer inspection, she is telling me that I have 
swelling at the scar in the front, which I could have told her that. I definitely know I still have that. I see it every day. And swelling in my legs and she did some manual lymph drainage massage on me and she was able to reduce the size of my legs by four centimeters, which I was thrilled because I'm like, that's why I wanted to come. She's doing this and then she's gonna have me back. I have 20 visits on my insurance that my insurance covers and she's gonna have me back and she's gonna do massage and I'm gonna wear smaller compression and things are gonna improve even more, right? Wrong. Apparently, she didn't exactly say that I wasn't bad enough for those things, but she just kind of kept going, yeah, so I probably think you can take care of this at home. You're probably not gonna need to come back and see me again. And I, that, I took that to mean, you're not bad enough off for any of the treatments that we offer here. And you're already looking pretty dang good, so why are you even here? She said that, not in those words, but she said, you look so good. Everyone keeps saying, but you look so good. Kay, I know. Are you kidding? I'm so happy about that. I love that. But it isn't about how I look. In fact, the plastic surgery, number one reason I wanted the plastic surgery is so I wouldn't have to wear compression and Spanx, especially when I go to dance class and stuff. I wanted to be able to not bounce everywhere when I'm on stage, and I wanted to be able to dance better without this big flap of skin in the way. Guess what, guys? Now my legs feel like giant 20 pound weights are attached to them and I have, I've lost a lot of my energy and spunk and ability to dance. So even though the stomach is not in the way anymore, it's still hard for me to dance. In fact, it's harder. It's harder for me to dance, especially clogging. I was way better before the surgery and now I feel like I'm just weighed down by leaden weights in my legs. And guess what? I get to wear compression for the rest of my life. Not just when I dance, every single day, forever. So yeah, not the news I was hoping for. Super bummed, but as I've had time to deal with it and think about it and realize, wait a minute, girl, look what you did. You researched this. You found out you had this. You started the therapies, right? You decreased the size of your body by 29 inches. 29 inches in 12 weeks. That's insane. I doubt any of her, like, people that she helps could do that well on their own. It is obvious that I am able to do it on my own. But you know what was also obvious? That I know more about the condition than she does. She's telling me, oh, you need to do this and this and this. And I'm like, yeah, I do this and this and this. And I also do this. And she's like, there's no scientific evidence that this says that helps. And I'm like, well, there's lots of anecdotal evidence. I know a lot of people to do it. And a lot of people it helps. And it helps me a lot. And she's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. And then I'm like, okay. And, I, and she's like, okay, well, you should also do blah, 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 blah. Right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I do that. And I also take mucinex. And she goes, Mucinex, why? And I'm like, it is a decongestant. It is, it thins the mucus in your body. And it also, as a side effect, thins the lymphatic fluid. It makes it easier to move. I mean, she had literally just told me, your body responds really well to manual lymph drainage massage. And I'm like, yeah, because my lymph fluid is thin. <laughs> and she was like, I have never heard of that. And I'm like, let me give you some resources where you can study up. Inside, I'm just like, mm. why, why do we need to go see a doctor to find out this stuff when you can learn more about the condition online just using your own brain than the doctor does because the doctor treats patients and the doctor doesn't know the new things and the new research and isn't caring about that because the doctor treats patients. The doctor remembers what they learned in school and things change really quickly in science. She, when I told her I was doing the keto diet, she was like, why? And I'm like, are you serious? And I told her, I'm like, okay, I went online to this class and I talked to three different lipedema lymphedema th therapist specialists who specifically work with morbidly obese patients. And the number one thing they tell their patients to do is the keto diet, number one. And when I asked all three of them, why? They couldn't tell me why it works. 
All they could say is, it works. So I felt like I gave the doctor a whole educational series while I was sitting in her office, and I really hope she listened. And I really hope she took the name down of the place that I got my research from and that she actually looks into it. And like it, uh, most of the stuff that I learned was from lipedemasimplified.net. She's telling me, you need to do manual lymph drainage massage. And I'm like, I know how to do that. I haven't been doing it though before as much. And the way I was doing it, she did show me that my groin lymph nodes are basically useless. It's all blocked off. So that I should be pushing everything to my, to my pits which is why she says not to get the rest of my surgeries, so I'm stuck with flat mar flap arms forever. But that actually did seem to do something for this, this week. So I did learn one thing. I mean, I guess I learned, number one, that I do have lymphedema, and I'm gonna have it forever. I learned that my scars are gorgeous and malleable and beautiful, and I have done a bang up job with them, and that I'm not gonna improve probably more than I already have. And Three, I learned that I need to use my pits, lymph nodes, because likely my groin ones are just not accessible because of the scar tissue. So, I did learn some things at the doctor, don't get me wrong, and I did really appreciate her seeing me and going, yeah, you have it. But she also said, you don't have the classic symptoms of lipedema, and I'm like, I am well aware that I don't have the classic symptoms. And the number one reason I don't have the classic symptoms is because I was starting to get the classic symptoms and then I did something about it and now I'm in a better shape than I was. Keto diet, compression, vibration therapy, all of those helped with my pain and I don't have the pain anymore. So just because I'm not feeling pain today doesn't mean that I don't have lipedema. So she didn't argue with me there, but she did make me pause whether or not Will the liposuction that fixes lipedema make lymphedema worse? So I don't know that I would get more plastic surgery. Knowing what I know about my lymphatic system and the situation it's in now, I don't know if I can. Um, I'm kind of glad it didn't do it all at once. Kind of regretting the thigh lift. I feel like if I hadn't done that thigh lift, I'd still have access to my groin lymph nodes and I'd be in a lot better place which is a bummer because I really didn't want to do that at the first surgery, but my doctor talked me into it and I paid $7,000 and my thighs just grew really, really big anyways. So it didn't really do anything other than remove the crepey skin that was there. Kind of wish I could have my smaller legs and my crepey skin back. The rest of it though, I, there's no way I could regret it. I mean, life changing. Even though I have a harder time dancing, it, it's still, it, I feel more confident. I feel more confident having a flat stomach. So, and my stomach isn't totally flat. As you guys see in the 360, everyone always asks me, why do you suck in? I'm like, because that's what I'm supposed to look like. Everyone else is flat that has this, and me, I've got this swelly belly. So I'm like trying to show people like, hey, I have abs, I would have abs under here. I have ABSs. <laughs> I know it's silly. It makes me feel better. So that's why I do it. All right, I am late for my party. I was supposed to leave 15 minutes ago, so I'm gonna, Take my leave from you guys. I hope I didn't forget anything this week. Please, please, please subscribe. Check out the about section for all the great ways you can support the channel and come back next week to see how my crazy life is affecting me and whether or not I'm able to maintain my weight loss during my reverse diet. Alrighty guys, we'll talk to you all again soon.